Welcome everyone. Big hugs. Big love. I see only your holiness, <laughs> your beauty, your gorgeous innocent self, your an angel self, <laughs> your holy self. <laughs> And so let's start today, this session, just extending love to each other. So how we do this is we just feel the, the love within us now, however that is for you. Every time you practice this, you might notice that this particular experience or feeling of love within you is getting stronger so it's not a personal love but connecting to an infinite love let's feel like a boundless love an abstract love just feel that within you now try to get in touch with it And now feel it radiating out of from you. Feel it going everywhere to everything. If that feels too difficult, you can just feel it going out to the people on the group or to people you know. But I'd encourage you to feel it just extending from you everywhere to everything. And there's nothing you need to do for this to extend. That's the teaching, I need to do nothing. What that teaching is talking about is the body doesn't need to do anything to extend this love. It's the mind that's extending. This field going out and enveloping everything. And notice that it's within you. So you have proof and validation that this love is within you. And that's God's love. That is the love of God. That is the all-encompassing love. And we can have holy instance of this love. So we might make a start so that because we've got quite a bit to get through. So the forgiving dream section, chapter 29, section 9. So this is an analogy of our lives. And he uses the analogy of children playing with toys. So as usual, I'll read it through. So Let's start off, he guided me this morning to um, get you all to ask the, 
ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand this. We just, I mean, that's what we should be doing all the time. Holy Spirit, help me truly understand what this is meaning. You know, bring the truth to my mind as we go through this in this in this session. In this way, we let go of the wrong mind, the ego mind. And we invite the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the right-minded thoughts, the holy part of our mind, the answer, the atonement. It's all whatever we, it's, it's something in our mind that wants to bring us home. And all we have to do is whisper to the Holy Spirit or just call, but it's really the calling of our heart, that real deep calling I want the peace of God. Help me to get to the peace of God. So between where we are and the peace of God, there's some undoing. So let's offer this session over to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus, and say, help me use this session to help me shift anything in my mind that needs to be let go of. Bring in the truth. Give me the miracle. So we really give over this session for the Holy Spirit, for Jesus, to help us. Because we all have to do this. We all have to do forgiveness. Forgiveness is our function, right? So every day is about every moment, all, I, all time is about forgiveness. Nothing more. There's nothing to get here. So our, what we're here in this world is to use it to get home. The Holy Spirit uses everything here as a forgiveness lesson to take us home. So the forgiving dream. The slave of idols is a willing slave. So we're the slave of idols. And we're a willing slave. Just because um, the willing slave is just because we feel guilty. We're not even sure why we're guilty. We've got no idea. Even when we hear at the, in the course we feel guilt from separating from God, that's probably not in your awareness. So the slave of idols is a willing slave. So what he just means by that is you're willing to join the ego. You're just willing to do that and you don't need to. You don't have to join. You can, have a, you can have a commitment and a willingness to not be a willing slave to the ego. For willing he must be to let himself bow down in worship to what has no life and seek for power in the powerlessness, in the powerless. So all we are is little is we're just mistaken. We've just forgotten. It depends where you are on your journey, how much is being made aware of you in your mind. But literally, if you're starting out, you just feel yourself in that ego mind and, you, and you're and you guided to, to look at that you're worshipping something that has no life. Nothing has any life here. The body doesn't have any life. Not eternal life. Not pure life he talks about. When he talks about life, he's not talking about a heart beating. He's not talking about what we think of life and death. He's talking about joy. He's talking about peace and happiness and fulfillment and that living in the joy. He talks about life as being joy and death as being depressed and anxious. Okay, that's what he's talking about. He's comparing those two. What happened to the Holy Son of God that this could be his wish to let himself fall lower than the stones upon the ground and look to idols that they may raise him up? So I know that feeling, you know, when you have that feeling of, you know, feeling guilty and worthless and hopeless, you feel that you're kind of like an old stone on a ground nothing you just feel that 
awful feeling of that egoic mind, of guilt and sin and fear. And you, and you look for idols to raise you up. You're looking for something, you know, something in the world you're seeking. What can raise me up? What can make me feel better? Hear then your story in the dream you made. And ask yourself, if it be not the truth, that you believe that it is not a dream. So he's going to go on and give us the story that we made. So when he says we made it, what he means is a part of the one mind that we're not in touch with as yet decided or have went into a dream of judgment, right? It's very important to realise that it's not the personal mind of what we think of our name. It's not the personal mind of Kate that's dreaming the dream. The idea or the beliefs that Kate has is part of the dream, part of the ego dream. It's part of the split mind, right? But there, there is a part of that one mind that fell asleep into the dream. Oops, my head's gone up again. <laughs> I always like to, whenever he says, um, hear then your story, your story in the dream you made, what he's trying to say is he's trying to say this part of your mind that is dreaming this dream, that wants this dream, that wants to be separate, that feels guilty and is trying to escape from the wrath of God. But it's not you as the personal self so don't feel guilty about that. This teaching is meant to help us come home. This teaching is meant to say, oh, good. Okay, there's part of my mind that wants this and all I need to do is go back to that part and do forgiveness on it and let it be healed. So let's read on. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Kate. A dream of judgment came into the mind that God created perfect as himself. And in that dream was heaven changed to hell and God made enemy unto his son. How can God's son awaken from the dream? It is a dream of judgment so must he judge not, and he will waken. For the dream will seem to last while he is part of it. Judge not, for he who judges will have need of idols, which will hold the judgment off from resting on himself. Nor can he know the self he has condemned. Judge not, because you make yourself a part of evil dreams, where idols are your true identity, and your salvation from the judgment laid in terror and in guilt upon yourself. Shannon, <clears throat> Shannon you're welcome to share anything that you feel is coming through to elaborate on any of these you know that always <laughs> so I just want to um, just take a couple of the lines from this section a dream of judgment came into the mind that God created perfect as himself and then number four it is a dream of judgment and then down to number nine judge not oh sorry there's um one more line yeah, so must he judge not and he will waken. So if you feel I want to awaken to live in the peace of God, so judge not. So literally our um, happiness and our peace is to judge not. And I remember when, at one stage I just wrote judge not on the hand <laughs> in Biro and just looked at it all, judge not, judge not, judge not. 
And if I did, and I I always call it quick forgiveness and long forgiveness in how I went through forgiveness. Quick forgiveness would be, oops, I'm judging, let that go. And long forgiveness was when it was really kind of took a hold of my mind. And that's when I would say, Holy Spirit, help me look at this, help me see this differently. So as you know, that was pretty much my prayer. Sometimes I would do a Bar and Katie process on it. Uh, sometimes I would apply the daily lesson. There was many ways he got me to undo it. So really what you tr the miracle is when you've got a false belief and something comes in to correct it about your true self. Now, I am the Holy Son of God. I am not a body. I am spirit. I am the love of God. Something, all that is the correction. That's the atonement, the correction. And then there's, oh, yes, that's right. So a dream of judgment came into the mind. So that's what he's telling us. We have to remember that the dream of judgment, so nothing could affect us here. I mean, you're looking out, you're looking at images. There's bodies, there's trees, there's cars, there's shops, there's your room you're in, your garden highways <laughs> everything literally is an image and only your the judgment in your mind can make you upset that's all you can be upset about the judgment so if you judge not he says you'll awaken so our role is to remember to have the miracle on all the judgments and I know when he in up where he says what is forgiveness, he says um, forgiveness is when you look and wait and judge not. So this is kind of the whole thing is that you eventually get to quick forgiveness where you notice a judgment, you let it go. Um, judge not because you make yourself a part of evil dreams. In other words, you just make his part. You make yourself part of a dream of judgment I mean anyway let's move on <laughs> all figures in the dream are idols made to save you from the dream so this is what he means by when we feel ourselves to be like a little stone lower than the stones <laughs> we're looking for something in this world we're asleep kind of like when I say asleep it's like just don't know what to do what do I do? Like, I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on in the world. So we look at the figure, what we he calls it the figures in the dreams. He's trying to remind us. And he's telling us um, that you have got an idol. So you might like, oh, there's somebody out there. They'll save me. They'll give me something I need. But what's going on? That's on the level of this world when we think we're in a body. But there's a mind asleep, a big the Christ mind is asleep in a whole dream of billions of minds thinking they're asleep, but it's only one mind. So all figures in the dream are idols made to save you from the dream. So it's important here because he's going to elaborate on this idea of idols that you become aware of anything, anyone or anything in this world that you put as your salvation or happiness. So maybe just contemplate this now. Just think about is there anyone or anything that you feel can bring you what you want, can bring you happiness, can bring you peace. Just think about that for a few moments. Uh, Carolyn, I'm not taking questions at the moment, maybe at the end the session I think you put your hand up 
Yeah. Now, I want you to tell yourself that whatever you've thought about, whatever you think, even if it's a partner, your child, a partner, your parents, anytime you think to yourself, um, this person needs to change for me to be happy. Like I need my child to be well. I need my child to love me. I need my child to see me. I need my part to, partner to acknowledge me. I need my partner to love me. I need my partner to put the bins out. I need my partner to do whatever it is. Or I need my mum to do this. I need my dad to say this. I need my dad to love me. I need whatever it is. It's an idol. It's an idol before God. So remember, a grievance is when you feel something should change. You're annoyed. The grievance comes with the idol and it comes with a desire and it comes with a belief. All that, you could take one little simple um, idea, anything, even if you said, I want my husband to, I want my mother or father or my child or, or my children to be like this, whatever, it doesn't matter. Any thought, one tiny little thought that they should be different is an idol and will keep you stuck. You're judging. You are judging and thinking you know, and not you. You The ego is judging and you're joining the ego. You're joining the ego. That's the ego. The dream of judgment is the ego thought system and you're not the ego. So the Holy Spirit corrects it. So anyway, all figures in the dream are idols made to save you from the dream. In other words, it's it's kind of trying to save you from the sin, guilt and fear that you feel within you. Yet they are part of what they have yet they are part of what they have been made to save you from. So you think that you're trying to get saved as that you as a separate person identified with the ego are trying to get another image in the dream to save you from. And yet they're part of the dream. That's why you can't ever get saved. They're part of the dream of separation. Thus does an idol keep the dream alive and terrible. You see, it keeps the dream of separation alive in your mind and terrible. For well, who could wish for one unless he were in terror and despair? So what he means by who could wish for an idol? Who could wish for oh, I've got to get love, I've got to get my kids to call me or love me or remember my birthday or my parents to do this or that, unless you're in terror and despair. Because if you're in the holy love of God, if you were in the Holy Spirit mind, there would be no judgment. There'd be no idols. It doesn't have it. It's just loves. It doesn't, it doesn't have the thought system of the ego. And the ego is the one that's judging. And, the, and this the idol represents. And so its worship is the worship of despair and terror. <laughs> it sounds awful, doesn't it? But we have to look and we have to acknowledge to ourselves that when we have an idol, when we have it, the idol hides the grievance, hides the desires, hides the frustration and anger. And so he tells us we're worshipping despair and terror in that and the dream from which they will come. It's, it's a horrible um, experience to be stuck in this. I know what it was like because I used to, my mind used to be in it. And so how beautiful for um, us to have a way out. How amazing to have a way out from despair and terror. It's not easy, but 
we just need to make a commitment to it. Oh, I'm, I'm just absolutely extremely grateful that there's this Course in Miracles that can lead us home, lead us to our beautiful holy mind. Judgment is an injustice to God's Son. And it, it is justice that who judges him will not escape the penalty he laid upon himself within the dream he made. He's just really saying here that um, we made the dream. We made it. We want it. And you will, on your journey back to God's mind, you will see where you chose this. You will be, and but you'll look at it with no judgment. It'll just be kind of looking in your mind and going, oh, yes, I see. I see where it came from. The Holy Spirit will guide you and show you. God knows of justice, not of penalty. But in the dream of judgment, you attack and are condemned and wish to be the slave of idols, which are interposed between your judgment and the penalty it brings. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like we have to realize that we, you know, we are a slave to idols. We really, really believe in that ego. That ego says, you know, if only such and such would happen. Oh, if I could just get this, or if I could just be like this, and oh, you know, I'll get. You know, it's always looking outside ourselves, and that's the idol, and that's what he's telling us here is just not to do that anymore because the penalty it brings is that horrible feeling, terror and despair. So we have to see what he teaches us is by comparison. That's why he's always getting to look at everything. Um, just look with him at what we're doing, at what the idols are. He's not judging us. We're not bad or guilty. We're just mistaken. Remember, he says you're just mistaken. So we just look without, we look with him at what we're idolizing. And he just says, let this go. This is keeping you from your inner wisdom, your inner guide, your inner love, your inner happiness. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Kate. There can be no salvation in the dream as you are dreaming it. For idols must be part of it to save you from what you believe you have accomplished and have done to make you sinful and put out the light within you. Little child, the light is there. You do but dream, and idols are the toys you dream you play with. Who has need of toys but children? They pretend they rule the world and give their toys the power to move about and talk and think and feel and speak for them. Yet everything their toys appear to do is in the minds of those who play with them. But they are eager to forget that they made up the dream in which their toys are real not recognize their wish their wishes are their own. Thanks, Shannon. So now I'd like you to just close your eyes for a few minutes. And I want you to visualize a little boy, maybe about nine, ten years old, eight, nine, ten, playing with some toys. And this is what he showed me to visualize when I went through this section many years ago. So just see the little boy with like a dinosaur, a, a toy, maybe a bud, I think it's light here, you know, those little toys, little soldiers, Maybe he's even got a toy like a mum and a dad toy, little figures. And I want you to see him 
maybe kneeling down on a little coffee table as some children play on little tables. And you've probably seen this with your own children or grandchildren. They start to make little noises and they have them fighting and they have, you can see them playing with their toys. Just watch them for a few minutes playing with their toys. See them, see the little child speak for the toys. He's going to make them talk to each other. Maybe there's a little dog there. Maybe there's a fire engine with a little fireman. And that's going to put out a fire. Maybe he's making the dinosaur roar and stomp all over the other images, the other characters. Maybe all the characters just fall down and the big dinosaur just stomps all over them. Just watch it and just notice how you have no judgment on it. Just notice you're just watching a little child play. You're not thinking he's bad, he's evil, he's great, he's good, he's amazing. You're just watching him play with his toys. And notice that he is giving the characters, the little toys, the life they have. He's making the dinosaur be big. And maybe it's roaring and it's knocking over the other little characters, the other little toys. They pretend, this child pretends that he rules the world. And he gives his toys the power to move about and talk and think and feel and speak for them. So he's speaking for them. He's, ro he's roaring and making the dinosaur roar. He's just see the child doing this. Yet everything their toy, his toy appears to do is in the mind of the child that's playing with it. Just really notice that those images, those toys are doing nothing. And the little child is giving, making them speak, coming up with ideas about them. So he, the little boy is eager to forget that he made up, that the toys are real. So imagine that that child goes to sleep at night and has a nightmare about his toys. The toys have turned against him.
So he sees the toys as attacking him now. And he wakes up in the morning after the nightmare and he's scared of his toys now. And yet they're nothing. The toys have turned against the child who thought he made them real. Yet can a dream attack? So what we need to look at is that we just had a nightmare. The little boy just had a nightmare. The dreams that the toys could attack him. And also, he might be reminded that he was the one that put the meaning on them, gave them life, told them what they should do. Can a toy grow large and dangerous and fierce and wild? And let's just look at the toy, the little dinosaur. Can it grow? large and dangerous and fear and fierce and wild this does the child believe because he fears his thoughts and gives them to the toys instead and this is an important point here so I want you to remember the teaching that guilt in our mind, the belief in, in sin in our mind, and the belief in the fear of God in our mind. are just thoughts and those thoughts say that the sin, the fear and the guilt is in an image outside me. So the images you see of everyone. It's like a toy to a child. And just select one image. Anyone will do. And tell yourself that this image has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. And that the thoughts, my thoughts, my ego thoughts, well, they're not really my thoughts, but at this stage we're going to say my thoughts are giving this image all the meaning it has for me. In other words, this image has no meaning. It's like a toy. It's like a child's toy. So put the dinosaur and the image of this person that you're looking at, put them side by side in your mind. Look at the dinosaur. Say it as a toy. Say it has no image. And then look at the person. Without judgment, this is just an image. You might even like to see it as a toy. Giving me guidance to say that, to look at that image of the person as if it was a toy. And 
now tell yourself that whatever you think that person is doing to you or whatever all comes from your thoughts a hundred percent this image can't do anything or cannot be anything except through your thoughts take responsibility that the ego thoughts are telling me the decision maker the part of my mind that's listening to the ego take responsibility that this image this toy means nothing and I my mind my ego mind is going out and putting the meaning on it and if I see that image growing fierce and dangerous and wild <laughs> it's because my thoughts have said that and the little boy that's playing with the toys, he gives the toys reality. He makes them act out what is in his own mind because he thinks they seem to save him from his thoughts. In other words, his guilt, his belief in sin. Yet do they keep his thoughts alive and real? He doesn't realise that what he sees in his toys keeps the beliefs in his own mind that he's trying to get rid of alive and real in his own mind. So as we think that someone else is guilty or sinful, we are keeping those beliefs alive in our own mind and we try to see it outside ourselves thinking we're getting rid of it. And we think that that image is turning or the toy is turning against us. So in the little boy's playing or his nightmare, the toy turns around and tries to attack him. He thinks he needs them that he may escape his thoughts because he thinks the thoughts are real. So we think that guilt and sin is real. We project it onto an image. And we think then the image, we think that it's in them and we think that that image now is attacking us. And so he makes of anything a toy to make his world remain outside himself and play that he is but a part of it. In other words, the innocence. I, the, I claim innocence by saying the toy's guilty, the toy's doing it, my mum's doing it, my child's doing it, my friend's doing it, a politician's doing it, my neighbour's doing it. We are making an image guilty to hurl the guilt out and it doesn't solve anything so he's using this analogy of children's toys to get us to see what we are doing Shannon yeah it's funny because we are God guarantees our innocence and so we want to 
throw the guilt out there and play innocent, but we are innocent. That's how we were created. <laughs> there is a time when childhood should be past and gone forever. Seek not to retain the toys of children. Put them all away, for you have need of them no more. The dream of judgment is a children's game in which the child becomes the father, powerful, but with the little wisdom of a child. What hurts him is destroyed. What helps him, blessed except he judges this as does a child who does not know what hurts and what will heal. And bad things seem to happen, and he is afraid of all the chaos in a world he thinks is governed by the laws he made. Yet is the wor real world unaffected by the world he thinks is real nor have its laws been changed because he does not understand. Thanks, Shannon. So, this is beautiful, the way he finishes this analogy. I just put away, just put your toys away. Put your idols away. Put your grievances away. Put your judgments away. Just let them go. He says we're like a little child trying to be the father. So this is really beautiful, this, this little teaching as well. That the little child playing with the toys thinks he has the power he thinks he's like powerful like what we call a father but he's just mistaken simply and then he gets scared of his toys he's like oh my toys can attack me but all along the toys can't do anything to hurt him he's the one that's given them the meaning and the ideas he's the one that's telling them what to do it's up to him it's all in his own mind so this is for us. We we think we've got to try to do something in a world because we think we've we've we're trying to get away from this, from God, from this beautiful love that we that we are. We've forgotten that we're created by love. In love, beautiful holy love. And so, He's asking us to take responsibility for what we're projecting onto the images in the dream. And he'd take it back or let go of the dream of judgment, the projections that someone's guilty. Or that even we're guilty because that's kind of how, why we're projecting it. We project it out like a virtual reality world. And we, all we know is when we find ourselves here, all we know is that it feels like everything's walled off. You know, we've got a wall split. That's why it calls it a split mind. And we're trying to be the father. We're trying to like, oh, what do I do now? How do I be happy? You know, we're kind of lost. <laughs> That's where we find ourselves like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> Oh, I've got to be a grown-up. <laughs> I remember growing up, you know, just going, oh, what do grown-ups do? What the hell do they live, you know? <laughs> what do I got to mean? Everyone's like, you've got to decide now. <laughs> but imagine having the Holy Spirit with you in that. No, oh, it's amazing because the Holy Spirit just says, you are loved, you are loved, you are part of love. And your function is to just be that love and be guided what to do and what to say and where to go. And that's really effortless. I mean, that's a big sigh. Ah, oh, that's all I need to do. And he will take care of any finances, of everything that you need. So we can just become like 
uh, a child of God again, become reliant on the Holy Spirit. We don't have to try to figure everything out. We don't have to be the little child trying to be the father. Oh, I've got to figure everything out. We can just surrender and let go and just say, okay, I'm spirit. I'm love. I don't have to make things. I don't have to have idols. I don't have to seek outside myself. I can just completely relax. I can put the toys away. And the real world is still but a dream. In other words, the world, the real world is really just seeing the images, but just seeing God in everything. But it's still a dream. It will fade. We won't be seeing images in the end. They'll be gone. Except the figures have been changed. This has been my experience. They are not seen as idols which betray. So it is a dream in which no one is used to substitute for something else, which means we're not going to try to get something from anyone here. I mean, if you see your brothers as dream figures in a dream, like in a virtual reality game, no one is born and no one dies because God is infinite mind. God doesn't have something be born, live a little life and die. But God is perfect love. So anything you see born and live, think you're living, think that it's living and dying is not true. But the way for us to um, see that the real world is to see the Christ there instead, the Holy Spirit, the love of God there instead. And that's the that's the real world true perception. So it is a dream in which no one is used to substitute for something else, nor interpose between the thoughts the mind conceives and what it sees. No one is used for something he is not. Right. And we're not trying, it's just look, uh, just give up trying to get anything from anyone. It's really to just let it go, just make a decision. You're not going to seek outside yourself anymore. Just, just sit, don't do it. For childish things have been put away. You start to see there's no image that I can get anything from. It's an image that, it's an image I'm looking at and all the meaning is coming from my mind. And that image is looking at you and all the meaning it's putting on you. And we're just, the dream is just images projecting. That's all the images. And the images will either project that you're Christ or that you're something it can get something from because that's the ego. The childish things have been put away and what was once a dream of judgment now has changed into a dream where all is joy because that is the purpose that it has. That's a happy dream. Only forgiving dreams can enter here for time is almost over. And the forms that enter in the dream are now perceived as brothers, not in judgment, but in love. And so that's really what we need to see is just have no judgment on your brothers and just extend God's love to them. It's that simple. Thanks, Shannon. Forgiving dreams have little need to last. They are not made to separate the mind from what it thinks. They do not seek to prove the dream is being dreamed by someone else. And in these dreams, a melody is heard that everyone remembers, though he has not heard it since before all time began. Forgiveness, once complete, brings timelessness so close the song of heaven can be heard, not with the ears, but with the holiness that never left the altar that abides forever deep within the Son of God. And when he hears this song again, he knows he never heard it not. Where is time? 
when dreams of judgment have been put away. So let's do a little five minute meditation where we go into the song of heaven, the song of love, the song of God. Let's let's give let's let's say, Holy Spirit, I let the dream of judgment go. I let the dream go. I leave it, I surrender, I let go of the dream of judgment. I want to hear the holy song. I want to hear the song of prayer, song of love, a melody. So let's just do five minutes of just listening. See if you can hear the song.
Okay, so I'll just read the last couple of paragraphs. <clears throat> Whenever you feel fear in any form and you are fearful, if you do not feel a deep content, a certainty of help, a calm assurance, A calm assurance heaven goes with you. Be sure you made an idol and believe it will betray you. For beneath your hope that it will save you lie the guilt and pain of self betrayal and uncertainty. So deep and bitter that the dream cannot conceal completely all your sense of doom. Your self-betrayal must result in fear, for fear is judgment, leading surely to the frantic search for idols and for death. So when you feel fear in any form, and how he says that we feel fearful is if we do not feel a deep content. So it's like a experience of really a deep contentment, a certainty of help, which is the Holy Spirit will help. You're connected to the Holy Spirit and you're being guided and you have complete 100% certainty of that guidance and your trust with that guidance. You just completely trust you're connected to it. And the calm assurance heaven goes with you. In other words, you're, got, you're just calm knowing that that love is within you. He says if we don't have that experience of contentment, certainty of help, calm assurance that we have to tell ourselves we have made an idol it's very important to really take these teachings so that you can be very clear with yourself okay I must have an idol and he says that the minute we've made an idol of something the minute we think we can get something from something here he says what's hidden in our mind is it, it that it will betray us because that's what the ego thought system says the ego thought system tells us to pursue idols but it also says that the idol will fall that we won't get happiness from it the ego says seek it but it says hang on it won't bring you that, but seek it anyway, but it may not bring you that. Seek it. So it's seeking and betraying you, seeking and betraying you. And that's why if you think about something you want from this world, admit to yourself there will be thoughts that say, I may not get this. So if you say, for example, think I'll get a job, a better job with better pay, so I'll feel better and I'll have more, and I'll worry less. He's telling you that the ego part of your mind will also say, hang on a minute, that won't work. Something else will go wrong. I'll probably be too busy, stressed out. I won't have time to relax. So you have to notice how the, any idol that you follow will always have betrayal within it. It's in the thought system. So your self-betrayal must result in fear. So what happens is when you notice that this is how the ego works, seeking and not finding, saying, yes, it'll be, it says, yeah, go after that job, get that money. Oh, you'll feel so much better having more security in that money. 
and then all its other thoughts are, yeah, but, you know, then I won't have time to do stuff. And, you know, then I might not be able to do my Course in Miracles stuff. And so that's you going after idols, which is the ego thought system that is seeking on, not finding. That's why that certainty of help with the Holy Spirit is the way that we get that calmness and that peace and that heaven, the peace of God goes with us because we trust 100% that the Holy Spirit will lead us. If we need some more money, he will lead us where we need to go. He will tell us what to, where to go and what money we need and we just trust because we don't know what we're going to need and we don't know where we're going to go but he will give us what we think we need while we think we're still in bodies. So it's really good to understand what he's talking about here. And these idols are these toys. And he wants us to put all these toys away. He wants us to throw them out, forget the dream of judgment, forget trying to figure out stuff by yourself. And in fact, he says, there's no yourself. You're only choosing between the ego and the Holy Spirit. That's the only choice you have. The ego pretends to be you. It says it's you, but it's not. It's a thought system of separation. That's what the ego is. And that thought system never leads to happiness. It never leads to a deep contentment. It never leads to a certainty of help. And it never leads to a calm heaven <laughs> Shannon would you like to read the last paragraph thanks love thanks Kate forgiving dreams remind you that you live in safety and have not attacked yourself so do your childish terrors melt away and dreams become a sign that you have made a new beginning, not another try to worship idols and to keep attack. Forgiving dreams are kind to everyone who figures in the dream. And so they bring the dreamer full release from dreams of fear. He does not fear his judgment for he has judged no one nor has sought to be released through judgment from what judgment must impose. And all the while he is remembering what he forgot when judgment seemed to be the way to save him from his pe its penalty. So oh, that's the end of the teaching. Um, the giving dreams remind you that you live in safety and have not attacked yourself. So we need the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Jesus is our guides to heal our minds and see that we're not a body, that this is just a, a dream. And it was over long ago. There's a little blip and an instant. It's over and done with. There's no world. There's no dream. And you can hold that all in your mind while still living in the happy dream. And as he says, all brothers just become a brother that you extend God's love to effortlessly because you realize that your spirit, so are they, not bodies. So now someone wanted to ask a question. I'm just going to take the uh, the mutes off. Hang on, let me do this. Allow participants to unmute. So I can't remember who it was that wanted to ask a question. Can you put your hand up? <laughs> Oh, Carolyn, 
Would you like to unmute yourself first? I was going to ask a question way back in the beginning of the re reading, but the answer came through and it was related to um, the dream and the ego and uh, related to terror and despair and um, feeling terror and despair, listening to the ego. But um, as you were reading, I could see clearly, I didn't have to ask the question. Oh, see, the Holy Spirit's here with our minds as we go along. Thank you for that, Carol, and thanks to you. Just, it was lovely just to share that. Has anyone got any sharings or questions or anything they'd like to for us to finish up on? Did you get any kind of insight or any insight in any of the analogies that we've gone through? Because next week we'll be doing a Christ blessing. Does anyone want to share anything that's been that's come through from these three analogies, which are really wonderful? May I share Sorry? again? Yes. Um, the previous week, Shannon, hi Shannon. Shannon did a teaching on grievances, a grievances, grievances, and after the the teaching, I felt really terrible. I felt like I was full of this terror and despair and it lasted like three days it was just like full on and i thought i deleted you on facebook because i thought i can't do this i'm going mad this is just terrible and uh, this morning i thought i'm not going to listen to these girls i'm going to keep myself safe and anyway so i listen to this teaching and I can see very clearly the separation between um, the ego and the toys and the, the mind, the, how the mind brings the toys up and plays and creates things. And I can see and feel the terror like idols. It's like um, the idol of having thinking that this or that will save me. and. Um, uh, the result of having the idol is the terror and um, after today's teaching I can just see this very clearly that this can be shifted that um, we don't have to I don't have to stay in this terror that um, the guilt the recognition of self-responsibility and the recognition of it's okay to feel responsible and to forgive and let go and surrender to the Holy Spirit. I want to share that so much. It's like, oh God, I had so many days of feeling the world was ending and now it's like, oh my God, look at this. This is really beautiful teaching. Oh, that's so beautiful, Carolyn. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yes, it's it's so beautiful. I, I don't know, I've just got no words. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is in your mind and has healed it. And sometimes we do go through that terror, but it doesn't last very long. And I'm glad that uh, something has been helpful here today to heal that whether it was today or whatever, whenever it came in. Thank you. Has anyone got anything else they'd like to share? Just uh, just similar to Carolyn, just anything you've gone through and anything that's helped you recently. Mary. Thank you, Mary. You'd like to unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, so recently I've been 
uh, Jesus has been showing me how to get rid of expectations of people and myself and the roles, like the role of a mother or the role of being a grandmother and all the expectations that go with those, like you expect your grandchildren, your children to act a certain way. And anyway, this just really drove home that drove that home about having zero judgments. It's isn't it kind of like having no expectations except ex just to extend love. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for that. Shannon, did you want to say anything? Um, Carolyn, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing that. It's great that you were able to, because you messaged me about how much terror you were feeling. And um, yeah, it's it. It, I'm glad that you were able to find some peace around that. Um, I would have to say that I know sometimes it seems like judgment is hard to not do. <laughs> like it's, you know, and we can really think that, oh, maybe, it, you know, it's how do I stop judging? And I just have to say that the the way that I was taught to not judge was to bless everyone because when you bless everyone you can't judge there's no room for judgment in that and so if you find yourself judging someone for whatever reason just bless them join with the holy spirit and bless them and the judgment will just wash away because i know that that's like one of the biggest things in this you know in this all of the text all of the lessons is don't judge it's how we awaken is to not judge. And that's a really helpful, helpful tool. That's all. But thanks, everyone. <laughs> thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, that's um that's that's so perfect, isn't it? Joining with the Holy Spirit and blessing and just, you know. You are the Christ. You are the Christ. You are the Christ. You are perfect. You are holy. You are love. You are your um, innocence is guaranteed by God. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And that's a blessing in case you feel like what is a blessing. You are the Holy Spirit. You are a child of God. If you feel like what is Shannon talking about, how do I do this blessing instead? It's just blessing. And what you're actually doing is just talking to yourself because there's only one mind. So you think you're blessing out of something outside you, but there's nothing outside you. But that is revealed as you continue to do the blessings. So, the, yeah, because one thing that you've got to remember is that you can only have one thought at a time in your mind. You can only think one thought. So if you're judging, you can just quickly shift it to a blessing and it can be as simply as I love you or um, you are innocent or you are the Holy Spirit or you are the Christ you are guiltless something even if you just say that one thing over and over for a few minutes um, it shifts you straight away into the right mind so you can't be in the wrong mind while you're blessing. And as you bless, as you say you are innocent, as you look at your brother and you are innocent and extend love, he says here about extending love, which is just seeing the innocence, that's all it is, because you're going to be extending love when you say, when you're saying to yourself you are innocent, you're sitting in the healed mind or the happy mind, you're doing it, and you're getting you're getting the healing of your mind. You're healing your brother's mind, which is just the one mind that kind of thinks it's separate. You're doing more than what you think coming from what you think is your separate being a little separate body. So it's amazing how that, you know, you can be in the wrong mind and then just be in the right mind within a millisecond. 
And that's all you need to do to give up judgment. So thanks, Shannon. That's great. Fran, would you like to share? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I'm just so grateful for these uh, songs and seeing all the familiar faces. <laughs> um, my brothers that I love. Um, when you... There's a song, uh, for those of you who are older, like me, um, and maybe some others, um, it's called Fly Me to the Moon. And um, there's a um, second verse. And uh, day before yesterday, I was doing some meditating and doing some of my practice. And that song, the second verse, popped into my head. And... Um, so I recorded it on my phone and sang it to myself. And <laughs> when you asked if tonight, if we could hear the song, that verse came popping into my mind again. So y'all look it up and sing it to yourself. <laughs> um, it's... Uh, Yeah, it's the first words of the second verse are fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Oh, that's beautiful. Fran, thank you for sharing that. And that really is um, that call to God and that joining to God. It's like a, a lot of the songs when I was um, doing my journey, he would um, have me listen to songs and reinterpret the words as a song between him and I. And that's kind of what I see happening there. It's like you, you feel your heart joining in that song. And um, it's just so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Ingrid, would you like to share? Yeah, um, I had a miracle um, of last week. I, in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., the eagle woke me up in a panic attack. It's like the second one I ever had. And it was about finances because I had to get a new or fix my washing machine. And I realized with this panic attack, I asked Holy Spirit, what's, what's this about? And it, I didn't realize it until I had the panic attack, but it was, I didn't think Jesus or God had my back. And so I did this uh, like process with that Deirdrick Walsack has and um, I, about beliefs and um, I forgave myself for the belief that I didn't think Jesus or God had my back. And with that, it totally shifted. And I felt such joy. It's, and ever since then, it's like, now I, got, I feel such peace and love. And I know God has my back now. Yeah, just wanted to share that. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And that ties in exactly with um, where he says certainty of help. Um, a deep contentment and a certainty of help. So that's like, yeah, God's got my back. The Holy Spirit will help me. And one thing, um, so he he's guiding me. Um, so next week we're going to do the um, Christ blessing and he's already shown me how we're going to do that next week. And then after that, um, we, Shannon and I were getting the same guidance about 
going more into silence. I know we used to do our 40 minute um, meditations. Um, so he's guided me that we're going to do um, some, go through some lessons, but use them as a, I'll read them and then we'll do a meditation on them together. So that'll be over the next few few months going through. We're just getting back into that. Um, so I've done a little bit of satsangs and talks and things like that. But we'll get back more into uh, just that quietness where we get a focus for our session. And he, he'll give us the sesh, the focus. And I'll read it out and then we'll go into a meditation. So that's beautiful. Thanks, Ingrid, for sharing that. Um, so helpful. And one of the things about the, the focus on the sessions coming up after next week will be listening to the Holy Spirit, hearing the Holy Spirit. That's He said that's the focus for those sessions so we'll be giving a little reading and then listening so we'll be going to be practicing listening and getting that guidance getting whatever he brings through so it'll be not so much meditation but listening and hearing so that's really nice to know isn't it that to have done some analogies we've been helpful and now we're going to after the Christ blessing go into really focusing on listening and I'm not sure whether I'm going to record them um I'll just feel into guidance because it's sometimes they're better off they're kind of not for um no I'm getting guided to to record them so they will be recorded all right hey, thank you everyone if, yeah if, if I could just add on to that um so my guide, the guidance that came through for me was to kind of just step away for a couple months um, and just kind of go deeply within. And so um, I think probably all through April and May, um, I will be here in spirit, but I won't be here on Zoom. So, um, but obviously, you know, I, I will um, come back and join in again after that. So I just wanted you all to know if you're wondering, because I'll be here next week, but then after that, I'll be taking a couple of months of just going deep within. I just have a call to silence and going within right now. So, yeah. Just Shannon, to just to quickly ask, does that include your um, Wednesday nights? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we'll be taking a break for a couple of months with that as well. Yeah. But I'll I'll resume that when I come when I come back. So all right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, thanks, Shannon. Yeah, I should Thank have you. probably elaborated a little bit about um there was a calling into silence, but yeah, Shannon had said I was getting called into it was either to take some time off or to do um just this kind of more silent uh, meditation kind of set sayings. So, um, and Shannon was called into silence. So that's beautiful. And it's always important to remember to follow your guidance because remember that certainty of help. So we we have always I've shared this over many years and been when taking little times where he guides us to take time off things and just simply go deeper, just having that whole time with him. Um so that anything you do, any group you hold, or, you know, a lot of the times people even coming onto the group, this group might do something, is to really remember that we have no responsibility to continue anything or do anything in a particular way. We are always following our inner guidance on what to do and when to do it. And so... If we were to say, I've started something and so I've got to continue it, even when you felt this may be a feeling of like maybe I need to take a, a break or a couple of months or a couple of weeks or a year, 
maybe I'll need to have a year of silence um, to follow that because I've seen um, kind of course teachers that do things and hold groups and do Zooms and not follow that and they don't get a deeper experience. Now, it's not it's not to say that that's for everyone, but it's to really remind you. And when and in the past, when I've taken time off and said, oh, I'm taking a month just to silence, people have said, oh, that's been amazing. That's helped me so much because you don't feel you need to keep doing something. And I'm like, no, because the Holy Spirit's in charge. So we know whatever he guides us to do is always for to be helpful um so we have to follow that and feel that um and so that's part of the teaching isn't it to see the demonstration that we you know the the teachers that we think are doing things and setting up zoom groups and whatever can be like oh actually i'm just feeling to go into silence now for a while so i was asking what he would have me do whether it was kind of feeling like maybe to take a month off and then it was like okay just go back to more of a silent meditation so that's what we do and then he led me to some particular lessons this morning and so it was like okay this is how he wants me to do it and this is what we'll do so it'll be nice for those that you that really like the group coming to the group and doing the meditations they'll be that way for others that like more talking, it probably won't be um, what you like. And I'm not sure whether we're going to do the Christ blessing at the end of each month. I'm going to feel into that and I'll let you know. All right, so let's just feel this gratitude to each other as we finish today and just feel this extension of love and this wholeness and this beautiful God's love within us, extending out, blessing everywhere it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for demonstrating that you're following guidance and I look forward to chatting to you sometime soon. <laughs> and thank you, everyone. See you next week for the Christ blessing session. I look forward to it. I love you and I bless you and I honour you. You are whole, you are complete, you're God's love your infinite love let go of that judging just let it go you don't need to just let it go like a little fly landing on your face no nope. <laughs> i love you talk to you soon see you next week gratitude and appreciation bye